Well, for a long time, conservatives have been concerned that the federal government is going to start paying for the cost of making a transition. No, not that kind of transition. This is the one involving the uh, President of the United States. And today, late today, as we record this, uh, last night as you see this, the General Services Administration Chief Emily Murphy has made the ascertainment, the determination that that transition can go ahead. This is freeing up six point, some $6.3 million in funding uh, for Joe Biden's transition team, as well as an additional million dollars in funding for some other aspect of Joe Biden's transition team, which uh, didn't seem immediately obvious to me on reading the story. Uh, Bill, the interesting thing about this is that it's a page and a half long letter from the General Services Administration administrator, uh, basically trying to make it clear that nobody put any pressure on her. And she did this of her own accord based on what the best she could determine uh, about precedent. And uh, I'll get into some more detail about that later, but I thought this was interesting for a GSA person to say, I did not receive any direction to delay my determination either from the White House, uh, directly from the president or from anybody in his administration. Uh, first of all, I guess, Bill, do you really believe that? Well, yeah, I do. It seems reasonable. I mean, you need six million dollars to hire enough people to carry that giant placard out that says office of the president elect. Uh, no, I mean, do you believe she years. didn't get any pressure from the White House? Yes, I do believe that. I uh, Look, th this seems to be one of those things where uh, there's a lot of things to read, tea, uh, a lot of tea leaves to be read out there. And and it just seems like every single day that goes by, everything is completely different. It's utterly vexing. Um, but in a case like this, I think I don't find it terribly unreasonable to assume that, look, if, if Donald Trump wins these court challenges, which I still believe he will, then um, then the transition doesn't happen. But this is not a trivial thing. You know, these things do take a lot of time. And so I suppose it's probably a reasonable assumption from somebody in the government to make that given uh, the way that things are going now, it's if, if he needs the time to do the transition, it doesn't seem unreasonable to me to make that assumption, even though I don't make that assumption personally. And it she didn't directly say this in her letter, but she hinted at the outcome of the certification of the vote in Michigan, as well as some court cases specifically in Pennsylvania that seemed to give an indication that that this was going in a particular direction. Uh, she did point out, though, that the reason why she had delayed so long uh, on her own initiative, by the way, is, and I'm paraphrasing her, that elections are up to the people according to the Constitution and are determined by federal and state laws and as interpreted by the courts. She basically said, it's not the role of the GSA to step in and declare a winner, but merely to ascertain whether the transition funds should be released. And so that's why, you know, this, as we record this, is the 23rd. We're looking at 20 days after election, the final election day. And, uh, and she's basically saying, look, I didn't want to be in the position of putting my agency between the courts or the electorate or the electoral college or the constitution, uh, any of those things, and the American people and the determination of who is president of the United States. From that one um, paraphrase sentence that you uttered, I thought she seems to me like exactly the kind of public servant we would want. That sounds to me exactly what I want to hear. It's not my business to elect the president. The president's elected by the people of the countries. The, the, poll their states, the states send electors, it's determined by the Supreme Court. It's not up to the GSA to make that decision. However, um, we got to get whatever happens, happens. I thought it was that that struck me as a constitutional, non-biased, non-partisan um, response. And it seemed to me perfectly reasonable. She also had a sentence in here that I'm sure that you'll appreciate since you've said much the same yourself uh, on multiple occasions. The actual winner of the presidential election will be determined by the electoral process detailed in the Constitution. That's all I want to hear. Uh, maybe she should run for um, for president. Uh, I'm sure she understands the Constitution better than the person uh, who she is preemptively preparing to transition to. Uh so one one more aspect of this that she brought up, and this is, I think I was listening to NPR and they described it as uh, as a very personal letter, kind of beyond what you would expect from a, a federal bureaucrat who was merely, you know, sort of handing over the keys and the funding that was required for this process. 
um, she said that uh, she she held off issuing this ascertainment, they call it, um, in the face of thousands of threats. Uh, she said to her safety, the safety of her staff, the safety of her family, even the safety of her pets by people who thought she should go ahead and make the determination. Thousands of threats. I always remain committed to upholding the law. She's writing this letter, by the way, to Joe Biden. What do you think of, uh, I guess, both her, her fortitude in the face of these threats and the fact that there were such threats? Well, if I understood what you just said correctly, what you were saying in the face of threats, I was thinking to myself, we there is no reason for anybody on this team to be issuing threats to the person who's in charge of the GSA. But if I understood you correctly, I, right at the very end of that sentence, you said that the threats that she was getting were from people who were threatening her for not having issued the uh, order. Is that correct? Um, that's the sense I got from the letter, and I don't have it immediately in front of me, but uh, yes. I find that enormously reassuring. Um, and... Uh, and I mean, we can we can widen this up uh, to some degree here. Either either there this this business about well, there's 600 votes here. There's either widespread, massive, systematic voter fraud, or there isn't. Um, and I don't know how that's going to play out in the courts. I don't know what the evidence is or anything like that. When um, when the moments occur to me that perhaps there isn't, I don't believe that, but I try to check everything that I say and I try to pre-flight all my beliefs and run them and make sure they're secure. And one of the things I do occasionally is I say, well, what if they're right? What if they're right? What if there is no voter fraud? What if this whole thing is just a, you know, kind of a uh, fevered reaction to the whole thing? And I, and I found myself, to be perfectly honest with you, I found my first reaction was relief. Uh, because we can lose an election. I don't mind losing an election, um, but uh, stealing an election uh, is not something I'm going to stand for. And stealing an election on a scale that I suspect it's been stolen means that we that they will just be more encouraged and better entrenched to steal the next one. So really, that's the last of the elections. Now that I'm going to fight tooth and nail. So we're in this gray area now where we've been told that there's a great deal of evidence and there certainly seems to be. Uh, and until that evidence is in court and a decision is made, we're all kind of, we're all, it's like Schroden, Schrodinger's America, right? We're half inside the box and we're half outside the box. Nobody knows. Um, the thing that I find so appalling and, and not only, uh, incompetent or negligent, but downright criminally, uh, liable is this constant referring to Joe Biden as the president elect when they certainly referred to Al Gore as the president elect after he did not win the votes in the in the state of Florida. And this constant ongoing um, effort to to basically make the case that, hey, he's already in the White House. They gave him the keys. You know, what are you going to do? Take take the keys away from him? You, Damn right, we'll take the keys away from him. Absolutely, we'll take the keys away from him. Um, so, so it. She is. She just sounds to me like a, a an above, a, not only an above average bureaucrat, but really quite a remarkable uh, bureaucrat um, who who basically held out and, and thought, okay, well, we'll see how this thing plays out. But there came and and she probably used up all the slack she had. And then at this point, it got to the point where probably it's like if Biden is declared the winner, he's going to need a certain amount of time in order to do the transition. And she's when I say she's playing it safe, I don't mean to say that she's that she's um, walking a line. I'm just simply saying that that is the, the most reasonable um, position to take, seems to me, because if Donald Trump wins these challenges based on the evidence, then we've wasted some portion of six million dollars, which normally takes us, I don't know, six or seven minutes to do. Um, but but then, all right, congratulations, Biden transition team. You don't get the transition. In a way, it would sting more uh, for Biden to have the whole transition thing in place and then have the rug pulled out from underneath his feet, which I'd enjoy seeing. I'd pay real money to see that um, when uh, whatever court challenges are resolved. So it, I, I'm certainly not uh, running around with my hair on fire because this woman agreed to it. And the fact that people were threatening her because she didn't do it is, to me, an indication, another little tiny mosaic uh, piece of data in the frantic, endless uh, trumpeting of, of, uh, 
of why are you resisting? This is already over. It's already happened. Why, 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 why? We'll kill you if you don't, if you don't certify this. Okay. Well, good for her for standing up. And, um, and it sounded like a measured response. And, and I wish her well. And I hope she stays safe from, uh, from the, the leftist assaults that are coming our way if, um, if this great crime is, um, is if they get away with it. Now, and, and if it turns out that there is no evidence, then it's not a crime. It's just a lost election. You can recover from a lost election. You can't recover from an election that has been stolen to some degree that, look, we, we had always, we had cynically said we should have never gotten to this point, that Trump is going to have to win bigger than the margin of cheating, which always seemed to be about two to three percent. But if, but if these allegations are true, then there is no margin of cheating. The margin increases no matter how many votes you turn out. If this is true, then the more people you turn out for Trump, the more the more cheating that gets done. That's how it's designed. So good luck to the uh, General Services Administration and um, and uh, keep your head down, lady. You seem like a decent person. We'll be following events as they transpire every step of the way. We produce some 40 shows a week here at BillWhittle.com. Not only this show, Bill Whittle Now, but Right Angle with our buddy Stephen Green, and uh, as well as the Stratosphere Lounge and occasional episodes of Bill's Firewall. All of that made possible only because of the love and respect that we get from our members who contribute on a regular basis from their financial means, but also their ideas, their encouragement, and the way they run their own content operation at BillWhittle.com. If you've not yet become a member, uh, I think you're one of the last half dozen people in the United <laughs> States who really loves this country, hasn't done so. So you may want to go to BillWhittle.com and click that big green become a member button. For Bill Whittle, don't, make Scott us, don't make us send the Bill Tifa people after you. Don't make me come back there. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Take care.